three, everybody. That was exciting. I got shot and na 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 na. That was really, it was really like just climactic. That yeah. dragon scene like gave me chills. I like <laughs> anything with dragons sold. But I actually have executive producer uh, Reinhardt here with me. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Gamescom. Good Welcome to, be to the here. stage. How are you? I'm good. Yes? I'm good. Thanks for having us. Yeah. I, I saw you were like intense looking at us in the trailer while we were here. Uh, how, how is this feeling like showing well, this So to the, the trailer, I mean, it's our intro of the game and it's still giving me a lot of chills. I mean, we were oh. working hard the last month uh, getting this amazing piece together. Yeah. And yeah, uh, here it is. I mean, it's... It just looks amazing. Yes, and I'm, I know um, I know it's kind of hard to see, but yeah. here we got some uh, some more footage of the game. Can you just break it down for like you know people who have never seen this before, this style? Uh, what is this all about? Yeah, so Spellforce Three, it's a fantasy um, RTS and RPG mix. So we're trying to elevate the RTS genre by mixing it with RPG elements. So you get the best of both worlds. Um, this, the Spellforce series was always known for that, so it started in 2003. There was a second installment in 2006, so for more than 10 years there was no big title in the series. And we felt like since it still has a very uh, big following, that we are going to bring it back uh, and just make a very modern game and build it up on the pillars um, that made the, the first ones popular. And this is really combining these two genres. And this time around, we were like, hey, we get to expand on that, so we have to make it like more complex, offering sure. more depth in both genres. And yeah, that's where we end up with. And also, um, I mean, we have a really big like story focus and mode. So I'd say like um, it's in this regard, it's very much like Baldur's Gate or Pillars Ooh, of Eternity. Nice. So we have tons of dialogues in there. Um, and the really cool thing, like you can not only experience it alone, you can play it together. There's a co-op mode. Whoa. Okay, that's very different that you don't hear too often. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at this and I, the only experience I have at RTS is StarCraft. Oh, okay. And it's very different. So what do you think makes this game good in its field as an RTS and RPG um, game? So we'll, s we'll go to the RTS gameplay in a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, it usually starts out, you know, with a little RPG. I mean, we got a cutscene at first, we had some dialogues. Uh, then you got to be explained where you are in the world, you got your objectives and then uh, eventually you get the base. The cool thing about the RTS is, um, you know, a game like StarCraft is very focused on micromanaging uh, right. your workers, so you're clicking all the time, and it's very hectic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Spellforce 3 is not about, like, very hectic and click-fest gameplay, so in the end, like, you, you don't need to have the highest the, or the best reaction time, um, it's more about the overall strategy. Uh, and we achieve that by not, like, offering direct worker controls, but you rather just assign your workers uh, on what they should do and they do it, right? Uh, but on the other hand, like we offer depth by uh, having um, resources and the resources, um, so you can only harvest them in the sector when you claim the sector. Um, so, so to expand, you need to first claim the sector and then like uh, build the resource uh, gathering building. Wow, wow. So what are we what are we looking at right now? Yeah, so this is this is some more dialogue before the RTS. Um, so yeah, so now we are getting the base. Um, so building the storyline. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And it's also it's very quest based. So you got like uh, tons of uh, I mean there are always the always a main line, and then like there are tons of side quests and uh, we call this thing inspections. So there's a lot of stuff to discover in the world that's. You know, it, the cool thing here, we can reward the player by uh, just getting some better armor, some better um, items, some better sword, um, or for fighting creeps, you get experience points, and you can make your hero better, right? And then they are more powerful in fighting. So, um, yeah, this is the last fight before we get the base. So what's actually also cool is like this radial menu that you saw. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically um, a way to um, have all the spells that you can use on the target um, all in one place. And you can use multiple them. at one time? Yeah, sure. So there are That's like cool. four heroes. You can see that in the top left corner of the screen. Uh, they all have their like um, equipped spells and abilities. They also have consumables like mana potions, health potions. And um, yeah, yeah, to you know, not make them die or make them cast more spells. Is there any like side quest that you feel is kind of one of those that you're like, oh my god, I'm so happy we put this in the game. There are tons. I mean, for me, the special side quests are those that have a very deep relation to the other Spellforce games. 
Right. So story-wise, the game is a prequel. So it's actually hundreds of years before oh. the first Spellforce game. Um, because Spellforce 1 started with a, at the end of a really devastating war that put the world into pieces. Um, we are before that war. So you okay. see as a player what intrigues led to the war and how it all came together. Uh, and this is what the, um, that the intro was referring to. So we are in this fantasy world. And in a fantasy world, like mages and magic plays a big role, right? Um, but because the, the mages caused another small war, the, ma the magic was banned. Oh, so wow. if, if you're using magic, like the, um, all the, like the characters in the game world, they will be like, oh, don't do that, because that caused the war. Mm. Uh, but what would the world do without magic? Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> there is still magic. You just have to hide it. Right? Yes, yes. And, you know, I, I, what I really like is the amount of detail that you guys put to this. It seems like you really pushed the envelope, you know, knowing that you guys came in. You have a brand new, you know, uh, type of way to build this you know, game from the ground up, but still be influenced by the others uh, from exactly. the past. Also, yeah. like in terms of the art style, Spellforce 1 and 2 were more, um, I'd say, closer to Warcraft. Uh, but we wanted to give this more like a Lords of the Rings feel uh, and look, so like a more realistic so, looking. <laughs> I used to play that game so much, Battle for Middle Earth. Oh, yes! Yeah, exactly. A long time yes, ago. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's, that's, that's kind of what I, when I first looked at it, that's kind of what it, yeah. I was vibing off of. Yeah. So for the people that don't know, the rest of the storyline of Spellforce, who are we actually fighting in this game? So um, the intro starts off by uh, introducing the new threat in the world, and it's uh, a, a disease called the Bloodburn. Um, so uh, basically, all of a sudden, uh, people are just dying, uh, and you don't know why. Um, and uh, like the queen sends you to discover like what is happening and what's going on there. Uh, so you have to find out, and by that, like you find out that there's something more behind it. It obviously has to do with magic. I don't want to spoil too much. No, no, no spoilers. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, what would you say would be um, a good way to kind of intro this? I know it kind of leads you off slowly, kind of getting to know the story. Uh, character building, uh, is there any character that you like? So you can, you can create your main hero. Sure. Like you can customize the appearance. You can play a male or a female hero. Um, and then like in the game world, there are actual characters that you can make to join you, right? Sure. So it, here, like the the RPG element, like really blends in really That's well. Cool. So, and you have just four hero slots, uh, but you got to meet way more than four heroes, right. and they all have like their special features and takes and abilities. So it depends on your style of play. Um, right. We wanted to give the player a lot of choice. This is also like it has a non-linear like story and campaign structure so in the end like you get a uh, a world map and you can say like hey i want to go to this land and see what's going on there and depending on my actions it will actually change uh sometimes man this looks incredible now when do we get to actually get our hands on this so we'll finally release it on december 7th uh 2017 it's already on steam we're doing right now a beta phase uh, for the multiplayer mode. I mean, we were just talking about story right now, but there's also a PvP mode. Um, and we have that, that beta running since a few months. We're okay. getting like slowly more people in, because obviously in an RTS game, the most important thing is it's balanced. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know StarCraft, yeah. so they're yeah. always like, oh no, this unit is overpowered, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to have a good set of data so we can balance it and will obviously react to, you know, players' feedback and see if there is, like, you know, it needs more balance then, right? Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the Twitch stage. Guys, make sure you check it out. December, lots of games coming out in the fall, winter. Make sure you guys, uh, you know, get your hands. And are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited <laughs> to play games. I'm, I'm excited. But don't go anywhere. We have